Okay then, good morning and thank you for joining the Average Golfer. I'm back here at 4 Golf Chester and uh, I'm about to get stuck into a whole range of Strixon product. Brand new. I'm probably a little bit on the, late on the scene in terms of the review, but we're going to go through um, two sets of irons and a new driver and also a driving iron. And the driving iron is available in the sort of longer irons as well. So lots of variations that you can put together in terms of the iron sets. What I've seen and heard and read so far has been really, really positive about this whole Strixon range. So I'm really excited to have a go with these myself. I was a massive fan two years ago when they released uh, their last set of irons. Before we go any further, this is the best fitting cart that I have seen. So hats off to Strixon because this is brilliant for accessing well, anybody's interested. But I'm so impressed with this uh, little fitting cart they've put together. Even so much as these little magnetic placeholders for the irons. But yeah, not very interesting that bit. But anyway, uh, I will get this camera moved down. Just waiting for the rain to go off. And uh, hopefully we've got a nice sunny day out there. Camera out there. Hit some golf balls. I'm going to start off with the... Uh, with the. I'm not going to call it Game Improver iron. But it's certainly the bulkier club out of the two irons that he's got. Let's have a quick look. It's the Z. It's not that one. It's the 585. And uh, we'll have a look at this really interesting iron, I think, could appeal to a whole range of handicap levels. Anyway, like I said, stop talking and uh, we'll move camera and get into some golf balls. Okay, so before I get started, let's talk about the shaft that I'm about to put into this Strixon iron. And it is uh, an NS Pro uh, Modus Stiff Flex, the 105. So uh, for those of you who like to know what shaft's going in, as you know, I've tried a few shafts of late, even graphite shafts that I've been overly impressed with and uh, before I decide what shaft I'll use in my next set of irons I think I'll stick with something that I'm more familiar with so this is uh, but an another good point as well though before I've just been looking through the Strixon's information whole range of shaft options and no upcharge as well in these irons and that's a real interesting one as well from Strixon that I've got to say really impressed with before I started the golf balls and uh, record some data let's just have a look at what Strixon claim is packed into this club it's going to make life easy for us average golfers let's start off first of all with a spec in terms of the loft how strong are these things lofted so i've got seven iron in hand and in the 585 it's 31 degrees worth of loft then onto the technology slightly different sole plate on these Strixon irons it's the same as what they had in the in the last range that they introduced um, so they're talking about turf interaction it's almost like a v-shape they call it a tall vt sole and the sort of angle into the ball at attack is slightly to the angle out of uh, releasing the club as well from the turf so it's it's a slightly different unique setup how much impact that has on performance i really don't know and i suppose that's very hard to measure the technology is speed groove which is an internal channel which if i throw up the image now uh, basically allows for more face flex enhancing speed and distance and this is a forged club so the forged head is something that i am particularly fond of as you well know uh, something that appeals to me Always the difficulty is getting for me is to get a forged club head with plenty of forgiveness, something small and compact. And at the minute, this is how I would describe this club. Fairly medium in terms of the width of the top line. Um, I've only got the seven iron in hand, so I can't tell you how wide the sole becomes in those sort of longer irons. But again, really compact club head covered with the forged feel. If it gives a forgiveness, then I think that's where it could, as I said earlier, appeal to a whole wide range of handicap types. Anyway, enough talking, let's hit some golf balls. Um, literally a few warm-up balls here this morning. So let's see how we can perform with the camera on. Nice start. So don't forget, it's, um, as ever, TaylorMade TP5 balls for all the data. Um, I'll give you a little few shots now. I'll tell you what I think in terms of the feel of these things. First ball was decent enough. Let's see if we can get a few more of them. Interesting that one. A little bit off the bottom, um, I would say. But still seem to perform okay. But I haven't really got one right out the middle as yet. That's a ball. That's solid. 
solid and right down the target line. And nice things to be said. I am, yeah. Come in anyway. Come on in. Come say hello. Come say hello. Don't be shy. There you go. He will not come in and put his face on camera. That's a boss man here. He'll be back soon. Right, let's carry on. That's reality. Oh, nice. A couple of decent balls there. And right, let's talk about, so... I'm not going to talk about performance. Let's talk about feel. The first thing is, as ever, and again, this appeals to not everybody. It's not a big deal. Let's try these off as I'm talking. Forge Clubs is, I suppose... It's a personal preference. It's what people like. Some do, some don't. For me personally, it's a major, major deal to what I like to use in terms of irons. And I think that whether it's feel or whether it's sound, then it's a massive bonus for me um, personally. But like I said, that's not for everybody. Last two balls felt really pure. As did that. Great launch angle on that. Super solid ball. Uh, yeah, performance quite good there. <laughs> That's three balls on the bounce. Pretty impressive. Um, what I want to try and do is I want to try and keep the reviews more uh, sort of less focused on numbers that were recorded here on GC2 uh, because we can go through data at the end. But I want to really try and shorten that bit up because maybe is that perhaps just a little bit too tedious when we get to that end of things. I want to just give you a, a basically first-hand opinion on as soon as I hit these golf balls with these clubs what I feel um, and like I said if we can back that up with a bit of data then absolutely superb as well because I know you're going to need that as well but without going to I, I don't need to hit 100 balls I mean the interesting thing about this is that uh, it's often asked that how an average golfer can do sort of club reviews which I sometimes question myself but I think the fact is that you know when you've hit enough golf balls with enough golf clubs you can quickly form an opinion on a club and i can form one on this already without reading data to be quite honest with you um in terms of appearance in terms of performance where i've just been getting out of those last three balls in particular there very very good indeed and if i can back that up with some data that tells me that then even better i'll tell you what i've hit four balls there that are absolutely bang on Right, I'm going to carry on in some golf balls so I can get some more data because, like I said, we do need it. We do need that data to back up any claims that are made, and we'll have a closer look at exactly what this is doing. It's doing exactly what I would expect it to do at this moment. It's probably launching a bit higher than I thought it would do for a 31 degree 7 iron, um, but I really like the look of the ball flight. Again, I hit the ball fairly high. We'll carry on hitting it with this thing and uh, with this shaft, and uh, we'll go through these numbers very, very quickly at the end. So I'll speak to you shortly. Right, okay, so uh, like I said, I'm going to keep this very brief and get the numbers thrown straight up for you for the 585 and let you make your own mind up and see how this thing has performed in terms of numbers. So straight away, ball speed's 112, launching 21 degrees on average. Uh, 4150, really low spin number, which I'm debating at the moment what uh, there's been a few issues with the spin on GC2, and I'm debating that one. But anyway, we'll, 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 uh, it is what it is, we'll call it that. Um, 32 peak height, 165 on average carry. Now, like I said, take the spin out the equation a little bit because I've got a little, I'm slightly dubious about it to be quite honest with you at the moment, but we'll have to do a little bit more testing on that. But every product I've tested of late, my spin number with 7iron is dropping out of the sky in terms of, uh, like I said, a real low number 4150. But anyway, that is what it is. We'll see what the 785 turns out, which is the next club I review. Um, Launch very consistently, ball speeds again if you have a look at those are consistent. A um, little bit of variation in terms of the height I suppose you might see there, peak height, a few I threw up there and uh, where that uh, variation in launches. But overall carry at 165, it was quite tight from front to back. But again the variables that you see there are very much the variables that are in my swing and on my ability to deliver that head consistently. So let's, uh, like I said, my my the, the numbers are there and the numbers are there for the people that want them take them for what you will it's a strong lofted 7 iron it's carrying what was it 165 so it's again that's longer than what i would uh, carry obviously a traditional 34 35 degree 7 iron so 
carrier distance it's where I would expect it to be it's launching quite high uh, I'm talking about now my assessment would be this lots of forgiveness um, for average golfers that like the idea of playing a more compact head with forge feel and like I said packed with a bit of forgiveness and to get 165 carry out and quite consistent numbers uh, over a fairly wide uh, range of, uh, of data there then the performance for me was more than good enough like I said for the swings that I put on the club today I think it's a great option a real great option and I think that whatever irons if you're considering buying new irons and that's the only thing that uh, is really relevant if you are considering them then Strixon have put a product in there that if as I keep saying if you like forge but you if you like a player's iron but you want that forgiveness then they put a club here that is throwing it right into the mix and very much has the appeal and the ability to appeal to a wide range of handicap golfers so that's me done review is over it's as simple and short as that maybe not as uh, short as i'd like because i do waffle on but that's my assessment important thing is this go and try them i've literally i took one hour break and someone come in for a club fitting and they tried out to trying some new irons and the guy has just come out and he's bought the Srixen 585s I swear to you to God that is the truth that is what happened he's tried the irons that are in this bay and he's come out with a set of 585s so that really strange coincidence but he absolutely loved them anyway that's the end of this review I'll see you soon